I am pretty sure that most of you have already uh, seen the drama that's going on around the WordPress, but if not, let me speed you up with this video that what's going on and why I am so interested in this. Not interested, I'm affected by it. Uh, I would love to see what's going on, how is it going on, and where does it end? How does it end? That's going to be important and why you should be aware about this one. Because this is going to probably change the whole ecosystem of how open source world works and what are the liable ways of using the WordPress and in fact any open source project. What can I do with it? What can I not do with it? How does the licensing works? When does the licensing doesn't work? It's all really bizarre to see that what's going on and why this fight is going on online. It seems a little bit childish at first, but then you realize uh, it's all going on in different direction. And the most, most crazy part about this is it is not easy to take sides. Usually, you know what's wrong, what's right. And it's easy to take side, although you don't say it out loud on the internet, but it's easy relatively to pick up the sides. In this case, I have zero idea what sides to pick. I really don't know and I don't have opinion how does this should end actually. So I'll walk you through with the whole drama. But first, let me walk you through that uh, a small incident that why I am caring about so much about the WordPress, although you have seen on the website or all my YouTube channel that I do code in JavaScript and Python and React Native and all those fun stuff, but never have talked enough about the WordPress. But to surprise you, uh, till I guess 28 years of age, the most amount of money that I have made in just one month was all due to WordPress. I worked for a client, there was a heavy transaction going on on his website and uh, millions of record and I helped him in speeding up his website. I introduced a lot of GraphQL and Gatsby which was popular at that time and through that uh, we were able to turn WordPress kind of a headless, it was a new thing at that point of time and the client was so happy that he wrote a really fat check to me. I was so happy that I donated uh, around $10,000 to just the contributors of different open source projects that I used. I was feeling just happy about it. So yes, uh, if you are young, like 28, and the most amount of money you have made in one month is due to WordPress, I still keep an eye of what's happening. Although I don't get involved with the projects now, I don't take projects on the WordPress, but it's something that I worked on it. And when you're making money on of it through an open source project, you feel really accomplished that my client is happy. I was able to add value to his life. I was able to get a fat check. And uh, apart from this, I was able to contribute $10,000 to all the open source project. It's all fun. I never looked at it from the perspective where the WordPress is going on right now. So I'll walk you through what the perspectives are and uh, why it impacts you and will probably impact a lot of open source project as well. This is an interesting drama. So let me share this. So this is WordPress. In case you don't know, WordPress is an open source CMS, content management system. A lot of people knows about the WordPress as just a blogging platform, which is a myth long, gone long time ago. Now it's a full-fledged website. You can do full e-commerce on that. You can do crazy good big newsletter websites to the news portals, uh, newspaper websites, to pretty much anything that you see around the words. And, and the WordPress holds a big chunk of internet. If you look at why PHP is still dominating the word, entire internet, that's probably because of WordPress. A lot of people still believe and trust and use WordPress. So on the left hand side, we have Matt, uh, Matt Mullenweg, uh, who is founder and creator of WordPress. And on the other side, we have WordPress Engine, which is a website which a lot of people use to host the WordPress. WordPress in itself, they also provide a hosting solution and service for all those people who don't want to uh, get around with the messy things of the WordPress installation as well as hosting it, managing it, maintenance, backup and all of that. So they also provide a solution for that. Uh, but WordPress actually did a, a WordPress engine did a better job in marketing the product, providing the solution to the people and they're big company like millions and millions of dollars uh, every year. So what's the problem you might be asking? This is where uh, things get really, really interesting. So recently in one of the conference, Matt said that uh, WP Engine is like a cancer to WordPress. They are consuming a lot of WordPress ecosystem, in fact, the core of the WordPress, but they are not contributing enough back to the WordPress ecosystem. This is already bizarre. How does this all happen? And the first question that should come to your mind that if I'm using an open source project, do I have a liability to contribute back to it? Like, of course, I can do it if I like it, but is it really a compulsory thing that I have to have to do it? 
And again, on the other hand, we have Matt, which is a really right that, hey, if you're using uh, an open source project, you're making millions of dollars out of it, you should probably contribute back to it. On the other hand, we have WP Engine, which says, uh, yes, we are profiting from the WordPress ecosystem. We are providing a hosting solution and we do contribute back, but not in the format that you like. Matt says contribute in the core WordPress, help in security, help in maintaining, help in training. But, but WP Engine, the whole of their side, what seems like is we are contributing in a themes and plugins and a lot of that. And they use these themes and plugins which are free for certain use. And after that, they convert them into the paid client at the WP Engine. So it's not truly free or free. Again, nobody knows that how much they are contributing in the core open source project. This is what a lot of drama actually stirred up. And what is really interesting for you is knowing and reading about these tweets. So this says, Matt, a CEO of Automatic, the company behind WordPress, has misused his control of WordPress to infer with WP Engine's customer access to WordPress.org. So another part of the drama is, since the Matt and all of them got into the fight and legal notices and whatnot, uh, Matt has actually cut off the access of WP Engine customer. Now, any customer who is hosted or is hosting their WordPress website on WP Engine, they don't have access to WordPress.org. They cannot update their theme. They cannot update their plugin. They cannot install anything. So the whole thing is being cut off. And a lot of people has been caught into the crossfire. That is where things go scary. So uh, coming back here, WordPress to interfere with the WordPress engine customer's access to WordPress.org. Asserting that he did so because WP Engine filed litigation against WordPress.org. Uh, this simply is not true. Our cease and desist letter was a letter, not a lawsuit. So you send a letter, it could have turned into a lawsuit. Uh, nobody sends a letter like this, but if you have sent the letter, that means it was supposed to taken seriously. It was not like, hey, I'm just sending you a letter and you can read it and throw it away. It's a serious letter. Not everything needs to be lawsuit, but again, and was uh, directed at automatic uh, for Matt's uh, pattern of serious and repeated misconduct and behavior that must stop for the health and stability of the entire community. So yeah, that comment that says uh, the WordPress uh, engine, WP engine is like a cancer. Of course, any company would say, hey, don't do this. This is hurting us. So uh, that's, that's correct on that side. Uh, but again, Matt's whole idea and whole pitch is that you're not contributing back to it. And uh, to surprise you, I actually went up and read the couple of letters and I really, really went uh, crazy nuts into it. So if, if you look at this, this is one of the letters being sent by uh, Matt to the WP. And yes, I did read all of it. So it says, uh, pay our client compensation in the amount to make them whole for your unauthorized use of intellectual property and unfair competitive. The specific amount for which may be uh, ascertained once we have accounting for US request about. So the whole part is merely 8% royalty on WP Engine's 400 million in annual revenue. So they are asking 8% of their revenue. And again, the point that they were able to make 400 million and the whole point is either pay us the royalty or just contribute in it. So I think this could have been sorted out by sitting that, hey, let's just sit down and uh, Let's talk about how you're going to contribute back into that. And turns out Matt is saying that he tried to did that, uh, getting some of their resources into developing WordPress.org so that both of them can actually benefit from this open source. But turns out they continuously de denied this request that we don't want to do this. This is Matt's version. And again, what's going on? How is it going on? So yes, there's, there's a lot of serious drama going on. And apart from this, uh, you can see a lot of, lot of things are going on. Let me show you a couple of things. So this is one that should shook the entire community here. It says not being able to do WordPress updates because of the Matt and WP Engine fight is infuriating. It is. For a small nonprofit being caught in the middle of, middle of this could be costly as if we need to migrate our site to a new host, that money time should be used for our mission. And yes, uh, my point is, what's the fault of these customers? If they are customers of WP Engine and as said by Matt rightly that they are not contributing to the WordPress core or something, again, you cannot force anybody being an open source or can I? I don't know what's the right point or what's the right path here to say that uh, it's WP Engine's customer, it's their problem. Of course, it's their problem. But cutting down an open source project like this, then yeah, that's also not truly correct. And forcing somebody that, hey, you have to have to contribute in that. 
again, I don't know if it is correct or not. Not contributing into the project and making millions out of it, I don't know to say it if it is correct or not. I thought it's a will situation that needs to happen. But when it comes to such amount of millions of dollars, I think somebody needs to contribute here. I don't know which side to take because it's an open source project. You kept it open source so that community can use it. And now a lot of community is using it, now forcing. I don't know. This is so confusing. And that is why... And again, Matt actually did wrote a lot of articles. Yes, I digged up into every single of this one and then I'm actually recording a video. So it says WP Engine is violating WordPress trademark. And of course, the company owns the trademark. And really a lock. So this is the part which we need to read. Uh, this is the important. According to the Matt, we offer WP Engine the option of how to pay their fair share. Why do they need, need, need to pay? First, that's the question. Why do they need to pay on an open source project? Was the license like this that you cannot host the WordPress anywhere? Like, what's the what's this is? I'm I'm worried about this. Like, how this will shape up the whole entire ecosystem of open source? Will the licensing will change that you can use the product but cannot use it commercially, or will it change that you can use the project but cannot host it anywhere, or cannot provide a hosting service for it? I don't know, man. I don't know. Either pay a direct licensing fees or make in-kind contribution to the open source project. Okay, forceful contribution from one side. So the contribution is something which comes up automatically that I, I feel like good and I want to And Some people don't want to do this. A lot of people does that. Uh, this isn't a money grab. Why and how is it not a money grab? I know I'm not taking side of WP Engine, but a business which is sustained, you're asking them to pay 8% I don't know how this goes on if I would be a business owner. If on the other side, I see myself as an open source project creator, I says, hey, it's almost like seeing like I'm on a YouTube, I make YouTube videos and I force everybody that, hey, you have watched my videos. So the like is compulsory. The comment is compulsory. If you're not doing this, you have to pay. Like, I don't know which is the right side. It is an expectation that any business making hundreds of millions of dollars off of an open source project ought to give back expectation this is not a compulsion this is an expectation and if they don't they can't use its trademark okay nobody can use trademark i, I give you on that so if whether they use the project or don't use the project if it's a trademark nobody should be using it uh, until unless it's allowed so this is i agree this is part wp engine has refused to do either and has instead taken a, a casting villainification that, that's a really tough word I had to look it up like what does it mean uh, what they're trying to do is villainification of my attempt to make a fair deal with them WordPress is licensed under GPL respect for copyright and IP like trademark and its code GPL but it's a GPL license and the concept of what open source means if WP engine wants to find another open source project with more permissive license and no trademark they're free to do so of course they will uh, if they can they fork the WordPress and start their own journey on their own like imagine what I want to show you here is imagine if tomorrow the same thing happens in the Linux and the Linux ecosystem as well the, hey you are using it for a while you are not dedicating enough of developers in contributing and development of the core Linux I'll file a lawsuit for you so where does this end and how does it actually ends up I am not sure because at this point, even if the Matt wins or the WP engine wins, it's a lost in the trust of ecosystem of open source. If the Matt wins, everybody will say that, hey, be worried, very, very worried about using open source because it's better to use commercial product than open source because when we go big, these kinds of things might happen. And if WP engine works, it's kind of a straightforward yes that, hey, you can take any project and open it for your own service and hosting service and take advantage of them. Don't need to give back. Where does the line, where is this line? How do we draw a line here that who is right, who is wrong? Uh, for this kind of a WP engine thing, even AWS is being accused of using a lot of things like that. Uh, MongoDB all the time keeps on fighting with that, that hey, if you're using something and deploying it and offering it as a service, you should contribute back. They don't, AWS don't rarely. And again, will people be enough interested in doing the open source project, uh, assuming that, hey, nobody will contribute back? And what, what, where is the line? I, I don't know how to say this is right, this is wrong, how this is all going on. Like, I don't know. If you know how to tackle this situation and 
is it worrisome or not which side to take i have zero idea which side to take it's all good on both side it's all bad on both side and how does it end lawsuit after lawsuit or the public drama twitter fight or sitting in the close room and signing up a deal which nobody knows how does it end and how does it impact the open source ecosystem so i thought to just share my thoughts on this one because this is interesting perspective and i am pretty sure you are feeling the same now that we don't know which side to pick up so if that's the same case with you uh, we want open source to win we want also the business to win but how does this happen again i don't know tweet this video out and share your thoughts on this like what's happening